Greetings Tesla Mansers, I am Borsenberger, and this is a rather informal episode of Tesla Stuff. Why are you seeing my ugly face instead of Teslagrad footage? Well, that's because I don't have a lot of things to show, but I do have a lot of things to talk about. You see, I released my last video, The Lore of Teslagrad 2, about a year ago. It sparked a large amount of conversation, and I do want to thank everybody for that, by the way. But it also left behind a lot of open-ended questions. And over the past year, we have actually gotten some answers to those questions, either officially from the staff of Rain Games, or unofficially via discussions among the fan base. So I thought, now's a good time to do a follow-up video and summarize all of the new things that have been talked about since then, as well as take a glimpse into what Rain Games is working on next, and finish with some personal speculation on the potential future of Teslagrad. So, without further ado, I present The Lore of Teslagrad 2, One Year Later. What, you were expecting some kind of logo? Seriously? <sighs> Fine. Let's get right into it. Topic number one, Tesla Kid has a name. Sort of. This tweet, or X, or whatever the kids call it nowadays, was actually published before Teslagrad 2 was released, but it wasn't until after Teslagrad 2's release that it got some exposure by being reposted on the Rain Games Discord by one of the fans, where the rest of us saw it, fell in love with it, and have been using it ever since. Magnus. My initial thought was, this is not a good name for a child, but as an adult, I think it fits him perfectly. Magnus is a robust, mature name, it's a great magnet pun, and it's the name of a chess grandmaster, so what's not to like? I hope that Rain Games embraces this name and makes it official, because as far as I'm concerned, it's canon now. And let's have some names for his wife, mother, and father, too. Topic number two, the king's wealth. Where did it come from? The fan base was unanimous in concluding that the alchemical gold manufactured in Wormheim never reached Teslagrad, rendering it useless. So where did his gold come from? Simple. It was taken from the pockets of his loyal subjects, the Electropians, either through taxes, donations, coercion, or even taking it by force. What are they going to do? Fight back? We saw how easily the king labeled people as traitors and had them killed. And let's not forget his little fountain of youth experiment of grinding people up and drinking their life essence. I'm sure he had plenty of ways to find people guilty of made-up charges when he needed more. A great way to keep the populace docile. Keep your head down and fall in line, or else you become the king's next protein shake. And hey, now that you're breakfast, we might as well appropriate all of your wealth while we're at it. So even though the king's gold was very much real, we, the community, decided it was still useless. Because when you declare war against all of your neighbors, how are you going to spend it? Who are you going to trade with? Nobody. And so, there it sat, within the vault. A testament to his failure. Topic number three. Eleanor's Motivations Some of these clarifications came from Rain Games in an AMA they did not too long ago, where I took the opportunity to ask about some of the finer points of the lore, and other details came from the fanbase. Eleanor was young, naive, and sheltered. After the Viking raid on Teslagrad, she saw the necessity of invading Wormheim to stop the attacks. She fully understood the animosity of the Vikings towards her and her Teslamancers as foreign occupants of their country, but it had to be done. She initially saw the Vikings as just marauders, but grew to see their humanity over time, especially in the wake of Galvan's increasingly horrifying experiments. During the confrontation in her throne room, she activated the teleporter to evacuate the Teslamancers to Teslagrad. She, however, declined to go. She wanted to abdicate the throne, but she was aware that the Vikings' opinion of her as a representative of their conquerors would be unforgiving. Why didn't she evacuate? 
probably atonement. She wasn't blind. She saw what Galvan was doing to them. She had to take responsibility for allowing it to happen. This is why Teslagrad knew that the Queen had perished, because the explosion severed the teleporter link and Eleanor never made it through. Topic number four, the primordial ooze, the Grus, and Hulder. In the aforementioned AMA, Rain Games said that the ooze originates from an ancient alien meteor that assimilated an earlier civilization, as well as countless creatures. The ooze is not sentient, but it functions as a very loose, collective conscious, id-based hive mind. Most of its spawn is one-off creatures. The Grus just happened to spawn with the capability for reproduction, and therefore survived and evolved as a self-sustaining species. Hildur, they said, is much more human, and her having the same kind of hair as Eleanor is likely not random. Galvan theorized that it reacts to living things it comes into contact with, so if we take all of this information and read between the lines, we can imagine the following series of events. Galvan makes physical contact with Eleanor, let's say a longing stroke of her hair. Then Galvan goes to his lab, opens an urn of ooze, conducts some experiments with it, and puts the ooze back into its container when he's done. Unbeknownst to him, a single hair follicle from Eleanor's head is left behind, submerged within the ooze. Time passes, gestation happens, and Hildur is born as a proto Gru spawned from Eleanor's DNA. Mind-blowing, isn't it? <laughs> Topic number five. What is Rain Games working on next? They have not made an official announcement, nor have they shown any official art. Ole, however, likes to create and show off meta art, such as this. Their next game has the internal working title Mechanical Heart, and it's a spin-off game featuring Anastasia from World to the West. And just like World to the West and Mesmer, it provides a break in between Teslagrad titles. It's a platformer, and that's pretty much all we know about it. Other than Ole likes putting cats everywhere in his art, but that's a topic for a whole other video. Topic number six, the King's Crown. What happened to it, and where is it now? This question came up a couple of times in the Rain Games Discord, but another question needs to be answered first. Which Teslagrad 1 ending is canon? To which the devs deliberately didn't answer and left it a mystery. My opinion is that the 100% ending is canon. Reading all of the scrolls gives Magnus the knowledge he needs to understand his past and his destiny, but either way, I feel the answer to where is the crown can be answered by looking at Teslagrad 2's ending. As the camera pulls back from the Tesla Tower, we see two important things come into frame that lend to the silent storytelling. First is the broken statue of the king with the word Svik written on it. We've seen that Norwegian word several times in the past. It means betrayal. Opposite the statue is the puppet theater guy from Teslagrad 1's 100% ending and he's putting on the same puppet show that he had 25 years ago of Magnus defeating the king. Seriously, old man, everyone in town has already seen it. Get a new act already. These two things match a characteristic often repeated by the dev team, that the Teslamancers are obsessed with history. They have not obliterated the memories of the old kingdom, Rather, the story continues to be retold so as not to be forgotten. The crown, therefore, would be an artifact of history, and my opinion is that it would be preserved in a museum alongside other relics of the Old Kingdom. Topic number seven. What kind of government does Teslagrad and Electropia have following the king's usurpation? The developers answered this question by calling it a Stressocracy. Magnus has refused to perpetuate the monarchy, 
and instead wants something akin to a national congress. But mostly he's been struggling to keep everything together, with lords striving to take control and people devolving into petty squabbles, which is why he had no time for his kids, as told in World to the West. The devs also said that Magnus is canonically mute, which makes it even harder for him to make his intentions known. For the most part, Electropia has held together via regional governance, which was also the case during the later years of the king's reign, so for the country as a whole, not much has changed. So with all of these lore gap closers in mind, I started thinking about what we could see in the future of Teslagrad. This will be the final topic. Borson speculates about Teslagrad 3. None of what you're about to hear is official in any capacity. I am simply taking a look at the potential plot points that have been discussed so far and putting them together to reach some natural conclusions. So, imagine. In the wake of this mostly peaceful but also tense and unstable political situation, there of course remain power-hungry individuals and sympathizers to the Old Kingdom, former members of the royal court, commoners who believed the king's propaganda and still think the Teslamancers are traitors, convinced that they've been living in tyranny for the past 25 years just because the guy they like isn't in charge. They wear red in support of their fallen leader, a vocal minority, mostly ignored by the populace, who as a whole are enjoying the peace, despite the instability of it. One night, someone breaks into the museum and steals the king's crown. The Teslamancers are alerted, and Magnus takes the lead on the investigation because of his first-hand knowledge about it. He takes his eldest daughter, Ohm, along with him to help with communication with the locals. He finds a lead and follows it into a hidden passageway into the basement of one of the larger buildings in the city to discover a hidden gathering of the sympathizers crowded around the crown. He tries to intervene, but they restrain him and manage to trigger the crown, releasing the king from its prison. With just a moment to gather his surroundings, the king swiftly snatches the crown, forms it into a sword, and drives it into Magnus's chest. Everyone stands in shock until Ohm finally lets out a scream and fires her Tesla staff. The king deflects the shot, which blasts a hole in a nearby wall. The king tries to retrieve the sword, but Magnus has an iron grip on it with his power glove. Without a weapon, the king is forced to flee through the gaping hole in the wall, with his entourage chasing after him. Ohm collapses onto the body in grief until her younger siblings, Tialv, Roskva, and Lumina, find her. They see the body. They know. He taught them well. They all share in the sadness for a moment, but with their encouragement, Ohm regains her composure. She grabs the sword's hilt, and it curls up into a crown in her hand. She stands up, and her grief turns to fury as she walks through the open passageway and scene. Why would I propose something this tragic? Well, if you haven't noticed, Teslagrod's story is pretty dark. Magnus's death is a plot element significant enough to write a story around it, and at the hands of the king he thought he had defeated is just bitter irony on top of it. Furthermore, if you take a look at the Teslagrod soundtracks, there's a bit of a running gag going on. The first game's soundtrack contained a spoiler, because the very first song, this one that plays on the title screen, is titled Dad is Dead. Teslagrad 2 does a remix of the same track, except now that the lead character is Lumina instead of Magnus, it's titled Grandpa is Dead. So with this plot point, Teslagrad 3 has the perfect opportunity to bring back another orchestration of this same song, except now it can be titled, I am dead. I am dead! He's nice. Why Ohm? This is the kind of event that would get Ohm to come out of her shell. In World to the West, she was the voice of reason that nobody listened to. The stifling older sister forced to babysit her younger siblings in her father's absence. I don't think they respected her. 
In fact, there's this drawing on the wall in the beginning of World to the West that says in Norwegian, Om Lukturiaitost, which literally translates to Om smells like goat cheese. Specifically, this variety of goat cheese that's made by caramelizing the whey of goat's milk, which actually sounds really good to me. In Teslagrad 2, all we saw of Om was a permanent scowl on her face with her arms crossed. So, Magnus's death would put quite a burden upon Ohm's shoulders. She now has an entire country to run, but more urgently, the evil king who just murdered her father and his sycophantic cult are now on the loose and need to be stopped. This is Ohm's coming-of-age story, but it's different from Teslagrad 2. Lumina, and Eleanor for that matter, had naive, innocent girl energy contrast with Ohm, who to me has angry goth girl energy. And I'm not gonna lie, I would love to see Ohm do some furious hack and slash with that sword, but she needs to come to terms with her teenage angst, and in the end, reconcile with her younger siblings and gain the confidence that she needs to become a leader. And speaking of her siblings, this is also their time to grow and mature and show Ohm that she doesn't have to bear the entire burden alone. Where do Magnus's wife and mother factor into all of this? I haven't decided. It would be really dark if they also died and left the kids as orphans. That's kind of where this narrative is going, but I don't want to commit to it. What kind of gameplay does this story allow? I think it sets up a lot of new opportunities. We would start off playing as Magnus in full Teslamancer gear. We investigate the crime scene at the Royal Memorial Museum and follow the clues as we investigate the shady back streets of Teslagrad City, all the while solving simple puzzles that serve as a tutorial for the Teslamancer's basic abilities. Then we transition to Ohm, also in full Teslamancer kit, except she now takes possession of the crown. It is, if you recall, a piece of Teslamancer technology. It has limitless potential, but Ohm doesn't know how to use it, and most of her ancestors who would know are all dead. Over the remainder of the game, she would need to learn how to channel her focus into the crown to manipulate it into the forms that she needs to solve new puzzles and battle the king's followers. Additionally, Tialf, Roskva, and even Lumina can lend support with some tag team gameplay, with each of them having unique abilities that Ohm needs to leverage, and ultimately, they would be the hidden factor the king doesn't expect that leads to his defeat, resulting in a solid bond between the four siblings at the end. I would think the kids would also want to try to redeem the king, for Lumina to tell him about what she learned about Eleanor firsthand but I fear he would just blame her death on the Teslamancers, specifically Galvan, and learn nothing from the tale. He's beyond redemption. So that's my proposal for what I would like to see in a Teslagrad sequel. Is any of it likely to happen? <laughs> Probably not. Is it too far-fetched? Possibly. But hey, it's just a theory. A Tesla theory. That's going to do it for this video. As always, keep the discussion going in the comments below and on the discords. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.